In this video, we're going to learn to use VSEPR theory to predict the shapes of some molecules. Remember that the key feature of VSEPR is that it says that bonding electron pairs and lone pairs repel, so the molecule will try to arrange itself so that the electrons are as far apart as possible. To explore this, I'm going to work through three examples of basic molecular shapes. For each one, we'll look at a specific molecule, and I'll first get you to draw the Lewis structure, so have a pen and paper handy. I'll then get you to pause the video and think about how the bonds in that molecule could arrange themselves to minimize the repulsion between the electrons in neighboring bonds. In other words, what's the best shape for this molecule so that the bonds are as far apart as possible? Let's start with carbon dioxide. First, pause the video and draw the Lewis structure for this molecule. Remember to tally up the valence electrons in all the atoms first. OK, so hopefully this is what you drew. If you got it wrong, go back to the material from Unit 1 on Lewis structures and do a bit of revision, because it's almost impossible to draw VSEPR structures, structures without first being able to draw accurate Lewis structures. So the question now is, how can the bonds position themselves so that they minimize repulsion? Note that for the purposes of VSEPR, we count each collection of bonding electrons as essentially a single bond. And by this I mean, although there's a double bond joining the carbon to each oxygen, we're not trying to separate out the two bonds within each double bond. Those four electrons are strongly localized in between the carbon and oxygen atoms. What we want to know is, where can the two oxygen atoms sit so that the two double bonds are as far apart as possible? For two bonds like this, the answer is fairly easy to visualize. They have to point in opposite directions. If you were to move either oxygen out of line, it would bring the carbon-oxygen bonds closer together. So for CO2, the VSEPR drawing looks just like the Lewis structure, and we can indicate that the bond angle, that's the angle made by these two bonds, is 180 degrees. And this molecular shape is very sensibly called linear. So far, so good. All right, let's try boron trichloride, which you had to think about at the end of the last video. First, pause the video and draw the Lewis structure for this molecule, or you can get your working from when you did it before. This is what you would have drawn. Remember that boron is one of those funny atoms that can happily be electron deficient, so it doesn't have a full octet. So, how can the bonds position themselves to minimize repulsion? Well, in this case, we've got three bonds. If we draw two of them uh, linear, then the third one will have to point out at 90 degrees. Is this the best that we can do? What if we shift them around to even the spacing out? Hopefully this is what you predicted in the task at the end of the last video. This molecular shape with three bonds spaced out like a propeller is called trigonal planar because the bonds point to the vertices of a triangle and they're all in the same plane, so this molecule is flat. The last detail to add is that if the bonds are evenly spaced, then because there are 360 degrees in a circle, the angle between each pair must be 120 degrees. OK, now let's try methane. I expect that you can all successfully draw the Lewis structure for methane by now, so let's skip to the chase. How can these four bonds minimize repulsion? Perhaps they stay planar, just like the Lewis diagram. Then there'd be 90 degrees between each pair of bonds. But is there nothing that we could do with this to space them out a bit more? We haven't yet used the third dimension. If we move things around and let two of the bonds point forwards and back, then we can come up with this shape. Imagine a triangle-based pyramid or tetrahedron. This molecule has the carbon at the very center of the pyramid, and the four hydrogens are at the four vertices. It's just like the chloroform molecule I drew in the last video. This shape is called tetrahedral, and the bond angle between each pair of bonds is 109.5 degrees, which you can see is an improvement on 90 degrees. The bonds are definitely further apart this way than if the molecule was squ uh, squashed flat like it looks in the Lewis structure. But what's with this drawing here? What's with the weird looking bonds? Well, this is where I have to introduce you to wedge dash diagrams. This is a simple way of drawing molecules so that you can indicate the 3D structure. For methane here, the wedge shape indicates that the bond should be poking out of the page, while the dotted bond is receding back into the page. The other two bonds, drawn as ordinary lines, are in the plane of the page. 
Any time you need to draw a molecule that isn't planar, you can use wedges and dashes to show that. So to summarize, we've seen three basic molecular shapes, linear, trigonal planar, and tetrahedral. And it's the number of bonds that there are to arrange around the central atom that determines which one occurs. In addition, each shape has a characteristic bond angle which directly depends on the geometry. You can see the pictures of the balloons here represent the electron clouds that are the bonds, and it's showing how they can arrange themselves to minimize that repulsion. I should say that this doesn't represent all pos possible molecular shapes. Obviously, there are many more complex ones, but this is sufficient for this course. However, if you'd like to explore the zoo more thoroughly, try to predict the shapes that would be adopted by molecules which have five bonds or six bonds around the central atom. In each case, draw the Lewis structure first, and then think about how you can geometrically arrange those bonds to get the largest angle between them. You can check your prediction by searching for VSEPR shapes on the internet. OK, so here's your task. I'd like you to draw the Lewis structures and then the VSEPR structure for each of these molecules and ions. Uh, you can use wedge dash diagrams uh, where that's appropriate to show the 3D structure. Uh, state the name of the shape and the bond angles that would be in that molecule. And then you can enter them into the little quiz. Lastly, I'd like you to draw a Lewis structure for ammonia and then think carefully about all of the electrons in the structure and predict the shape of this molecule. And that will lead us into the next video.